looking up at the sun. Up at the sun. Lovely day. What can you see? Can you just see? See. You see the hills? You see the hills? This is my big brother Timothy. He's just turned 46 and loves being on holiday with my father in the Lake District. Are you enjoying it? Enjoy it. I think you are. In 1961, Tim was one of the first children in Britain to be diagnosed with autism. There were doctors saying this child is hopelessly handicapped. And the best thing for him was to go into a hospital and you should get on with your life and forget all about him. When were you last on the lake? He wasn't mentally handicapped as people understood it then. He wasn't Down syndrome, he wasn't grossly retarded or anything. You want to, try it? You want to hold my hands? Hold my hands. You see what it is like, that's it. That's it. Physically, he was quite perfect. He was a very handsome, pretty little boy. about 15 months old, such childhood babble as he had, which wasn't speech, it stopped and he fell completely silent. And it was then that one got worried and wondered what really was going on. And then we had a paediatrician who was uh, interested in him and trying to find out what was wrong. And I remember well that during the course of various consultations, he went off to the USA and came back and decided, yes, it was what they then called childhood psychosis. We now call it, call it autism. When Tim was small, he often had tantrums, and my father would explain that he couldn't help it, he was autistic. But no one had really heard of the condition in the 1960s. Even now, most people just associate autism with the MMR vaccine. I wanted to find out what is known about the causes of autism and to understand what's going on in my brother's head. There have always been autistic people, but it was only 60 years ago that Dr. Leo Kanner first put a name to the condition. He wrote a paper about some children with very strange behavior. We have two specific symptoms that always have to be present